What's good guys, we're back at it again with another video. I actually have something extremely special for y'all today. I'm actually about to get on the road, head towards the NIBC, if you guys don't know what that is. It's basically just a conference for all the top private schools in the country, like La Lumiere, Oak Hill, uh, Montverde, IMG, Sunrise Christian. Basically some of the top schools that you've heard about that compete for the national championship at the end of the year. But for today specifically, I'm actually going to watch Montverde versus IMG. IMG has Jacoy Hutchinson. We saw him last year at City of Palms. He was hooping. They also have Amir Ali. I'm excited to get eyes on him. They do have a couple players that I also want to watch as well. Montverde, star-studded roster. We already know who they have. Cooper Flagg, one of the top three players in the class of 2025. They also have Sean Stewart, who I'm really, really high on. Marvel Allen, we've made a breakdown on him before. Chris Johnson, Kansas commit, has also been making some noise, but I've never seen him live. I'm excited to see him as well. They also have Derek Queen. I got my first look at him a couple months ago when he was playing in Atlanta for Under Armour. They also have Kwame Evans, one of the highly ranked players in the class of 2023 Oregon commit. They also have Liam McNeely, who I actually saw at Peach Jam 684 with Do It All. I think he played for Drive Nation, but I never got a chance to do his breakdown. I've always wanted to. So today, why I say this is going to be a little bit different for you guys is because we are going to be vlogging. But at the same time, I'm also going to be breaking down what's happening on the court, giving you guys some insight at timeouts. Just something that I really haven't seen before, especially in person. Really excited to do that for y'all. I'm going to see y'all when we get on the road. On the road, so I figured why not answer some of the DMs you guys have sent me. I get a lot, so I can't answer every single one. But I figured I'd answer some in video form right now. As you can see from the question on the screen, one of you guys who actually plays basketball in Spain, that's so crazy just knowing that. There is a lot of you guys that actually play basketball overseas that actually watch me. I really appreciate that. So this question actually could probably apply to a good amount of you guys who are overseas and do want to play basketball in the U.S. And luckily this past year, I actually was a coach at a post-grad program and we had a lot of overseas basketball players. And I was wondering the same thing. Like, how is that process? How does that happen? How do players overseas end up coming over to the U.S.? And just from talking to them, how it usually happens is through an agent. Now, I can't say I know the specifics about how to find an agent or how to contact an agent, but what I do know is that for the majority of players that came from overseas to play post-grad basketball, or even high school basketball, we had a high school program, is that they did have an agent, and that agent helped connect them with different programs around the U.S., and then with the help of their agent and their family, as well as that player, they make a decision as what school to go to. And actually, even after our season ended for our high school program and our post-grad program, we had one player who utilized his agent that helped him get over to the U.S., he used him to actually help him get a walk-on spot at a Division I school. We actually had other players utilize the same agents that they used to get over to the U.S. They used those same agents to get them spots at D3s, NAIA, schools all across the country. So the biggest thing I would have to say to that is make sure you're getting an agent. I will actually speak to some of those players that I have coached before, and I'll try to bring that information to the channel when I get it. But we are still a little bit away, so I'll probably answer another question when we get closer to my bird.
know, a lot of work in the off season and just really trying to understand why I wasn't in the game and give your coach a chance to answer the question. If your coach doesn't have a real reason, or, oh, or this, this, and that, maybe it's something that needs to be discussed further. But for the most part, it could just be a, oh, you know, I just didn't think your shot was falling at that point. Or, oh, it could have just been a matchup thing. Just have that conversation with your coach and go from there. About to walk in the gym right now. I'm gonna film a little bit of the inside. It's my first time being in there too. So I'll see y'all when I get in there. All right guys, we finally made it inside. All I can say is I wish I had an arena like this when I was playing in high school. This is crazy. I've already told you before, this is a game that has a lot of D1 basketball players and there are even some players out here that have some potential to play in the league one day. I know it's hard to hear me right now, so it probably won't be too much talking until we get some timeouts, things like that. Just wanted to show you guys how it looks in here. Crazy atmosphere. Monverd wanted to be the aggressor offensively, even off tip-off. Liam McNeely here, not wasting any time, finishing strong. Watch the effect Cooper Flag has on the game over these next couple clips, not only challenging everything at the rim, but also being relentless offensively, always looking to follow up his shot, finishing strong in the paint, and he also gets some passing lanes, creating turnovers. couple of plays the impact that Cooper has had on the game not only on the offensive end but on the defensive end as well getting two blocks getting steal also scoring the ball Kwame Evans showed flashes of his skill early knocking down jumpers and as you're going to see on this next defensive possession it's Cooper flag again being a menace on the defensive end
Monver does a great job turning stops into fast break opportunities. They don't waste time getting the ball up the floor, always looking to get it into the paint. Hey, but as y'all can see, it's too loud in here. I made a mistake. I should have brought a mic. I was not expecting this crowd over here, that little student section. I was not expecting the student section to be this loud, so I might just have to talk to you guys at halftime. I'll see what I can do, but this game is electric right now. Cooper Flag making an impact early. IMG was down big early, and one of their biggest issues seemed to be their shot selection, as Montverde was so good defensively that they forced them into a lot of tough and bad shots. Amir Ali did start to assert himself in the second quarter, trying to get IMG back into the game. I want you guys to take note of how hard it was for IMG to score in the paint. Every single drive was met at the rim, and on the other end, it seemed like whether it was a make or a miss, Montverde always got the open shot they wanted. Okay, so as y'all can see, Montverde came a little bit down to earth second half. The game got a little bit more competitive, but I want you guys to notice how in transition, Montverde, very hard to stop. And on the defensive end, they're challenging everything at the rim with Sean Stewart and with Cooper Flagg. It's hard to score in the paint against this team. They're definitely going to have a good chance to compete for the national championship for sure. I'll let you guys enjoy some game film from the last two minutes in the first half. Definitely had some highlight plays, but definitely had some plays you guys could learn from. So I had to walk outside. Y'all saw how loud it was in there. First quarter was the Cooper flag show when I'm talking about offensively, defensively making an effect on the game. Also number 14, I gotta look up his name, but that's definitely somebody we gotta do a breakdown on at some point. IMG got off to a real slow start, but they started to pick it up in the second quarter. I'm hoping it's gonna be a better game in the second half, but all in all, just being here in this environment, it's been a great trip, I'm telling you. I'm gonna start going to more games, doing this a lot more because this was actually crazy wasn't expecting it like i said i'm excited for the second half see y'all back in there the second half got off to a great start on both sides with marvel allen starting to become more aggressive for montverde creating opportunities for himself and for his teammates and on the other side jacoy hutchinson and bryson tucker started to get it going
part of the reason why Mount Verde was able to get out to such a big lead is because on the offensive end, they weren't just good individually. They were great as a team as well. Watch on this possession as every single player touches the ball and how patient they are, waiting to get the perfect shot. If you guys haven't noticed yet, one of my Verve's biggest strengths is that at any point in the game, more times than not, all five players on the court can knock down the three and can stretch the floor. And they also have the ability to bring the ball up the floor, which allows them to get out and transition faster. Amir Ali was a bright spot for IMG this game, showing that he can knock down shots from all over the floor. Over the last couple minutes of the third, again, watch the shot selection on both sides. For the most part, Montverde is shooting open threes or shooting in the paint, while IMG is taking a lot of contested jumpers. Cooper Flag did cool down a bit in the second half and up big. He did take some tough ones, but what he does on the defensive end cannot be overstated. Again, he gets another block, and it seems like every time he makes a play like this, something good happens for Montverde on the other end. Throughout the rest of the game, Montverde seemed to continue to get whatever look they wanted as they cruised to the victory. So it's the next day. I just want to let y'all know I played in some high school games a while ago and I played in a lot of college games recently. I don't know when's the last time I've been in an environment like that. When I'm telling you it was electric, loud, I was not expecting the student section to be that loud and they were right next to me. So, of course, when I'm trying to talk to y'all, all of a sudden I realize y'all can barely hear me at all. I am going to do more of these trips, but at least next time I know I definitely need a mic. Specifically, we are going to be going to City of Palms in a couple weeks. I do want to talk about the game a little bit, though. I mean, from the jump, it was just obvious that Montverde was just a little bit more overpowered. I'm talking about they got five stars almost at every single position. And number 14, Asunua, I had no idea who that was when I'm telling you I had never seen him before. 
but this dude was knocking down his open threes at 6'9", also putting it down a little bit, finishing in the paint, and you saw what he did, dunked on somebody pretty crazy. So that's a player that we definitely might have to do a breakdown on in the future. He definitely opened my eyes. But for that whole Montverde squad, just starting off with Cooper Flag. a lot of people talk about his offense, but for me, what he does on the defensive end, when I'm telling you he's relentless, he's trying to get every single steal, he's trying to block every shot. I think he must have had at least four blocks in this game, at least. He also knocked down the open three, showed a little bit of skill, putting the ball on the floor. That kid is definitely going to be special, someone to watch in the future. Another thing that I did realize, because they were so talented, is, you know, it's hard for some players to get on the floor. So I was expecting to see a lot of Sean Stewart. Same thing with Chris Johnson. He wasn't really featured as much, but it is what it is. When you have so much talent on your team, you are going to have to learn how to play a role. Excited to see what all of these players do in the future on the IMG side. Like I said, they were a little bit overmatched. Amir Ali did show an ability to knock down some open shots. Luke Kane also gave a lot of effort, you know, getting some putbacks, driving to the rim, finishing strong in the paint. Bryson Tucker also had a lot of strong drives, but in a game like like that it's kind of tough to compete especially in an environment like that and the team you're going up against like i said extremely talented at every single roster spot it was kind of tough for them to pull out the win but i'm sure they're only going to get better and better as the year goes on like i said i'm going to be doing a lot more of these i had a lot of fun and i'm not only going to just be going to the private school nibc games i am going to start to go to some local games and hopefully i find some talent that no one knows about like sure subscribe turn on post notifications i appreciate you guys watching remember you want the one-on-one -on -one evaluations of the breakdowns that get posted on the channel and my website btibasketball.com in the description also if you have any questions for me need any advice and my link for noodle in the description i'll see you guys next time with the next video